The Pistols Ephemera in the Cornell archive is absolutely extraordinary. And uh, Cornell acquired these materials before the prices started going completely ballistic. Because yes, now I'm saying it again, punk is Dada. And what I'm seeing when it comes to punk ephemera is actually really similar to how the trade in Dada and early surrealist ephemera really, really started skyrocketing in the mid-late 50s. Uh, the first major American Dada exhibition was in 1953 in New York. And previously, you know, Dada broadsides and pamphlets and, dare I say, zines were cheap and plentiful and no one really wanted them. And then after the first major exhibition, they started getting collected. Uh, of course, with punk, there is not really punk art. There's not really visual art because it is a disposable culture, which John and I pointed out in our punk graphic design book. So one thing that might be tricky to understand if you're 22 is that these things were all handcrafted. They were all, you know, etsied. That you had to like have glue sticks and scissors and sharpies and rulers and pens and that you actually did paste-ups for all of these examples of graphic design that we see. And those paste-ups were not preserved in a manner where you were thinking of them as art pieces. They were like as disposable as, you know, one of the pizza menus in your kitchen drawer. So it is very, very rare that examples of original punk paste-ups have survived. The cool thing is that we actually have some of them here at Cornell. Um, it is also really interesting to see, and now, now we're going into situationist lingo again, you see so many examples of detournement, which is basically a post-war French theoretical term for painting a mustache on the Mona Lisa or, you know, doing like uh, blacking out the eyeballs on a Donald Trump poster or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, this is an example of a uh, John Savage the contemporary detournement of a Sex Pistols gig flyer. Uh, this was the handbill for the Pistols playing at the Notre Dame in the fall of 1976. Uh, that was the first time that John saw the Pistols perform. He took that handbill and then he cut, cut out stuff and pasted it around and mashed it up. And then this became the front cover of his first fanzine that he published tail end of 76, very early 1977. And this is set in juxtapose to a Swedish teeny bopper magazine poster of the Sex Pistols. Uh, the magazine poster was like a mainstream teeny bopper magazine where they could like, you know, tack up the Justin Bieber's of the day on the wall of their room. The funniest thing about this poster on the other side of this, we have the Eagles. And what could possibly be a better example of A, the commodification of punk that actually happened in real time, but also how different this is. How completely unslick and rugged and rough and tumble this performance at like a local Swedish discotheque is. And you know, one thing that you gotta remember, I'm old enough to remember this, I'm born in 1965. So I was 12 in 1977. Music before punk, with the exception of black and Latin music, pop music was so horrible. You know, disco was rad, especially the rad, the rad disco that came out of the African American community or the Latino, Latina community. Um, funk was still going strong, there was great jazz. Mainstream rock and roll before punk it's almost impossible to understand how awful it was. It was so awful that you can't even have like an aggressive attitude about it. It was more like being mad at a commute or being mad at like an ugly highway overpass. And it is also, was also all music that was generally about the status quo. And of course it sounds super simplistic saying that punk was about upsetting the status quo, but no doubt it was. And it's also thinking about the upset of the status quo in a pre-medial culture is also really, really difficult to understand. 